Welcome to Women With Drive, a show by the Deakin Melbourne Boomers, talking all things Aussie women's hoops. Hosted by Boomer's own, Lou Brown. Women With Drive. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Women With Drive, presented by the Deakin Melbourne Boomers and proudly supported by Sukin. On tonight's episode, we will have a chance to meet the Boomers' new high-performance coach, Michael Kiovitti, or as we know him, Mick. And I'll also be giving you guys an exclusive tour of our new home for the next couple of years in Parkville at the State Hockey and Netball Centre. Women with Drive. Now, joining me in the studio, we have Mick, our high performance coach. Thanks for joining me, Mick. Thanks for having me, Lou. Uh, So first year with the Boomers. It is. Just to begin with, can you give me a bit of a rundown on what your role is with the Melbourne Boomers? Yeah, I guess the um, the term high performance coach or high performance manager is thrown around a fair bit, but essentially um, I, I kind of act as the glue between the medical team, the players and um, our admin team. Essentially my background's sports science and strength and conditioning, um, but yeah, play, play a, a role in sort of bringing everybody together, making sure you guys have got everything you need at training and that, um, that you're fit and healthy and you can go out and do what you want to do. Yeah, and also we just we had a meeting this morning and yep. you're also dibble dabbling as the COVID officer too, the BSO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but was right. it a biosecurity officer? Uh, biosafety officer. Safety officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Security kind of sounds And I, I get, I guess um, when we think about like player well-being and player health and making sure everyone's in good shape, that sort of is part of the landscape these days. Yeah. Um, it's all part of managing risk and... It's not something we, we like doing, but we kind of have to do it. Um, yeah. and, and it's integral to like the playing group that we stay healthy and we know what to do if someone's yeah. unwell. So, 100%. But yeah. how are you enjoying it so far? The team, the, the program in itself? Well, it's been great. Um, I mean, it helps when you come into like a really nice facility like this. Yeah. Um, it, it's been incredible to have access to, you know, to the recovery and the strength and conditioning facility. And often in my role, that plays a huge part in what you can physically do with the group. So... Um, to have access to this has been, I think it's set the tone, you know, like everyone is is carrying themselves and operating and committing to the program at a professional level yeah. because of the, the facility. So that's been great. Um, guys, super receptive to anything that I suggest. Um, and he's, you know, giving me free reign. The girls are lovely. I'm not getting any pushback yet <laughs> from anybody. Yet. <laughs> it's, only, it's only week two, but pretty, pretty compliant group. And um, no, I think, I think, it's just a great environment for me to come into and just sort of pick the low hanging fruit and make some changes yeah. without trying to completely overhaul everything. I think right. um, some good things are already being yeah. done. Yeah, no, yeah. and I just I just want to note for the viewers as well, this is the first time the Melbourne Boomers have someone in your position full time. So yeah. I just think it's a huge testament to the trajectory of where this um, program is going and how it's building up. Mm. But um just so you were with Danny Nong Southside before this, yep. but then what attracted you to then joining the Boomers? Um, well, look, I, I think I've got a young daughter, yep. and I one day hope that you know she can she can work her way up um, and and become a, a sports person. Um, it's something that we all we all dream of having kids that we can live vicariously through as um, as former athletes or coaches. But I, I think just women's sport in general is in it's such a great place at the moment. Um, and I had a lovely experience working with Southside and with Dan Nong Rangers. I just feel that, I guess, female athletes are just so appreciative of, of the support that you give them because typically they don't necessarily get that. Get the resources much. aren't yeah. there. And um, I just think it creates like a really great working environment where everything you do is appreciated and um, it's just a great working environment. And I really do enjoy watching the game, so that helps. Yeah. Now, before I get back to our conversation with Mick, it is now time for our tour of our new home at Parkville. Okay, guys, you've heard a lot about this much anticipated move from the State Basketball Centre to Parkville. So here we are to show you the inside of the Melbourne Boomers' new home and the wonderful facility. Also, you get a little bit of an insight on the day in the life of a Melbourne Boomer. Come check it out. All right, guys, so I'm here with Kayla George. We are in the theatre. Kayla, the first question I have for you is, can you spell theatre for me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, T-H-E-A. Oh, my God. <laughs> E-A-T-R-E-T-T-E. Honestly, I have no idea. Okay, so, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. But spell Mississippi backwards if you want. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, okay, so, but can you take us a little bit of a breakdown of when and why we use this room here? Yeah, absolutely. So usually when we've been really naughty, we get sent to this room. No. Um, so we use this room usually on a 
Sunday morning and sometimes a Thursday morning just to like kind of brief us on you know the training session where we're at and sometimes we use it when we have like special guests like Dom our nutritionist coming in this morning so yeah it's a great little I don't know if you can pan the camera around there's lots of great seats lots of great gals on the seats currently so yeah we just want to use this as like a, our meeting room so a bit fancy perfect thank you Kayla all right we are off to the practice sports next all right, so we just wrapped up training. We're here at the wonderful practice facility. I got Lily Scanlon with me. Lily, give us a little breakdown of the, the facilities and tell me how you're liking it. So right here, we've got our practice facility. This is where we come every day and get in our work. We have the two basketball courts behind me, some of the girls shooting. And then behind that, we have the two netball courts. We do a lot of conditioning there. Um, and yeah, it's been great so far. What an awesome facility for us to train at every day. Thank you, Lily. Stay with us. We're on to the gym next. All right, Rachel Brewster, come here. Okay, wait. You're decent. You're, decent. Yeah. You're always decent. Okay, so we're here. We just came from training. We're about to pump yeah. some iron. Yeah. But Bruce, uh, obviously a returning player, I want you to talk a little bit about not only the great gym that we have, mm -hmm. that's your area, but also the convenience of it too. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, if you guys, I guess we're going to show you around now, but this is such a good facility. It's it's one of the best gyms that I've I've worked in. Um, you know, I've been lucky to have, to have access to some good gyms in my time. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one is definitely up here and, and being able to go straight from training, walk down the hall and it's right there. It's perfect. What's your, what's your favourite machine in here? Ooh, um, I mean, I love the squat racks, obviously, <laughs> um, but we have, we've got, we've got, we have it over here a hip thrust machine. Should we go check it out? If you're all about the booty game. Follow us, follow us. We're going to full tour right now. We've got some Pilates, the reformers. Tess Madgen is also a Pilates coach, so she's been getting on here. All right. This is a fancy contraption. Here is, yeah, the hip thrust machine. So usually if you're pushing like 140, 150, what was that, Mike? 140 on the hip thrust. Mike only got 30 kilos on the hip thrust machine. So it does the job. It's very good. All right, thank you, Brewster. Should we check out the conditioning over? Okay, follow us. We're still going here. <laughs> All right, come on, Brewster. So Brewster works at Core Advantage as well, which we learnt when she was on the show previously. But um, now over here is conditioning, and that what did they? What did Mick have us do the other week for uh, active recovery? He called it. Active recovery was just 15 minutes um, on the spin bikes here at about, it was about 100 watts. So it was pretty cruisy, but these are very, very fancy bikes and they actually calculate the pressure of every each pedal on each foot. And you have to try and get this perfect circle to make sure that you're pedaling nice and smooth. I had no idea, so <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, they're super cool. Um, so yeah, awesome to have access to those. Um, we also got assault bikes, Madge's favourite. She loves the assault bike. Um, and we've got a little sled track as well, which is awesome. Now this is a state-of-the-art facility right here. And we're about to go get some weights done. All right, so now we're here at the show court. This is where all of our home games will be played here at Parkville. It may not look like too much now, but as you can see, they're getting prepped for us just down there. Picture it now. It's Saturday, the 11th of December. 7.30 p.m. and we're suiting up, getting ready to match up against Southside. We can't wait to see you here. And that is all I have for you guys. I have loved being able to show you our new home. Season's right around the corner and I cannot wait for you all to get here and see it for yourselves. I'll be right back after the break with more of my conversation with Mick. Okay, so you spent three years with Danny Nong and then Southside as well, now come over to the Boomers. But what initially attracted you to women's basketball and the Belmont Boomers? Um, well, if I sort of think right back, I was actually um, playing a role for Jayco in their health and sport okay. sort of program. And um, obviously, Jerry's a big sponsor of yep. women's sport in general, sport, Australian sport in general, and had my first opportunity to work with, with women's basketball in that role. Um, I just kind of loved the fact that... Um, you know, the athletes are just so appreciative for what you offer them. And um, obviously, 
typically female athletes aren't given the, the access to resources and coaches the way that male sport is, especially at a professional level. I think it's getting a lot better. Yeah, um, slowly but surely. <laughs> abs- absolutely. And I, th- I, I just really enjoyed the fact that, yeah, anything you could bring or any sort of support that you showed was just really valued and um, compliance was excellent. You know, like whenever I rolled out a program or brought in a new system, people just jumped on it and followed process. So that makes it really easy as yeah. a coach. Um, and I just fell in love with the game, the culture, the people, the energy. Um, you can be, you know, 10, 12 points down with a minute to go and still snatch victory. And that's one of the most amazing things about basketball. basketball and, yeah, and, and I sure. love that. So, um, yeah, opportunity, right timing. And then, um, yeah, really fortunate to have worked with Larissa at Dandenong. Okay. Um, and she's obviously a really big part of what we're doing here yeah. in Melbourne. So, you know, she sort of helped me um, come across and, and hopefully have an impact on the program yeah, cool. here. Yeah. yeah, well, I know all the girls are loving you. And, oh, that's positive. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just for now, not the mid con- not the mid training conditioning though. Anyway. Yeah, 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 that's hard work. Yeah. <laughs> but will we take it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just a little bit about you. I know you also have a, a role within um, AFL and I believe Richmond Football Club. Can you yep. tell me a bit about that? Yeah, so um, that started sort of uh, about 10 years ago, actually. I was head of high performance for the VFL spent a couple of years in that role and then uh, also worked uh, alongside the men's program as an assistant strength coach and then went off and worked with a few other teams for a little while and now I'm back in a, in a new role. I'm, it's a really unique role where I work in the Richmond Institute, which is Richmond Footy Club and Swinburne, sort of preparing young athletes for life after sport yeah. if becoming a pro kind of doesn't work out. So we, we offer, you know, sports education programs and tuition and mentoring and kind of yeah, putting the pieces together so that your sport cool. become can become life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I combine my role there, which is mentoring, teaching, and then with this and, and get this really nice balance of um, being able to coach and then support people. Yeah, amazing. I, I definitely think I've noticed um, with what you do with us, it's not always just coaching us, but a lot of it's you educating us as mm. well, which I think um, is big time and it also helps with the longevity outside of our sport. Well, I, th- I think that's one of the best things we can do as coaches or, or as athletes is just have a long lasting impact on people. So through education, through storytelling, yeah. you know, even you guys, when you head out and work with the community, it's the stories, it's the interaction, it's, they're the things that have long lasting effects. Sure, so yeah, yeah, I think education is important because when you guys move on, hopefully not to anytime soon, you, you, <laughs> you take those things away with you. Yeah, yeah. no. So you got um, football, basketball, what other sports have you worked with across the board? Yeah, um, my first role was with, was with uh, Rugby Union Australia. Okay. So I was working with their national talent squad here in Victoria, did that for a couple of years, um, spent three, four years working in the NPL, which is like MBL one, but for soccer. Okay. So second tier, spent a few years working in that space as well. All mainly team sports, which um, coincidentally have, have fairly similar physical qualities. Yeah. Basketball probably being the exception that you know you need to combine huge aerobic, physical aerobic needs, strength, power, and skill. And that's what I love. I love the challenge that um, you need to be the ultimate all round end to end athlete yeah. for basketball, and that's a great challenge for me. And so, have you worked with along uh, individual sports as well? I have a, a little bit. Yeah. I, I helped uh, work with a couple of indiv- individual athletes leading into uh, the Winter Olympics. Okay. So that was cool. a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was really exciting, really unique um, you know, nuances within the sport that, yeah. are, that are different to different sports. So uh, training uh, an athlete for the ski cross, which is like... I don't know is if that you've cross country skiing? No, it's actually no. like motocross, but on skis. So <laughs> like it's, oh, it's, it's it's extreme. <laughs> I think they start their season with about 60 athletes and normally finish with between 10 and 15. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, really different demands, but yeah, individual sport, again, different requirements. Yeah. But um, yeah, a uh, couple of different sports. No, so do you find a difference between, you know, in your experiences, preparing uh, a team and then also pre- then preparing an individual yeah, definitely. And um, when you're working one on one with an athlete, you've got the luxury of like really giving them all of your energy, all your time. So programming probably gets a little bit more specific. Okay. Um, you can get feedback from a physio or from an allied health professional and then really hone the program. I guess, as you would know, in our program here, we've got 10, 12 girls all sort of roaming through the gym at the same yeah. time. And what we're trying to, I'm trying to do is get around and make those refinements of the program as we go. Mm-hmm. And then away from the program making permanent changes but i guess um there are more confines to fit in with a team program you've got skill development you know you guys have got medical physical needs there's recovery when there's so many elements you just have to be able to decide what's critically important yeah. um, when you work with the individual athlete you've got more time so you can just put 
all your eggs in one basket and sort of focus on really doing everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what we call like a gunshot approach where they just throw everything at it. Right. <laughs> Whereas with team sport, you guys um, have so many elements in your program. We have to say, well, that's kind of cool, but it's not really that important. Right. So in this setting where we're time poor, maybe that's for off yeah. season. Truly prioritizing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You have to think, well, if there's no real benefit in this um, right now, then maybe it's something we we um you know leave on the cutting room floor right, right. Yeah. i'm sure we can find a couple of things we can leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um just while we're comparing um you know working with both men and women do you mm -hmm. find a difference between working with both of them um look i think f physiologically there's some differences obviously um yeah. you know like in terms of where female athletes and male athletes differ in terms of you know mobility and strength and the the things that things that sort of come to mind um, in terms of movement mechanics and but really at the end of the day if, if female athletes and male athletes are have had the same training history yeah. you know like they've, they've had just as much access to, to strength work they've had just as much access to skills really when they get to that professional level they should be on par outside of just relative strength um, I guess the big difference in working with the female or the male personality as opposed to just the physical <laughs> qualities there's some obvious differences but no I, I think Women are funnier. Well, it's a lot more fun, but I think males tend to um, often just commit to a program all the way and see it through without really questioning what's in it or why it's there, or they just sort of get it done. It's this yeah. kind of, I've got to be tough and I've just got to push through. Whereas a female athlete will be really honest and say, hey, Mick, is there another option? I don't really like this one. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable doing it. Can we find an alternative? Yeah. So I feel females take more ownership of their program and want to have an influence, yeah. whereas males are just like, I can do it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of testosterone yeah. boosted environment, but that's, <laughs> oh, a, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big difference. I no. think. And then in some of the most successful athletes that you've worked with, mm -hmm. what has been that you can see as some of the most, uh, sorry, some of the similarities and differences in your most successful? Um, I would say just like an ability to work out what is a priority for them. Okay. Um, and that takes a little bit of time, but I think, you know, the, the cliche is be coachable, be willing mm -hmm. to accept feedback. That's critically important. Um, when athletes put all their eggs in one basket and say, I am a basketballer, when things aren't going well and that it impacts how they feel about themselves because it's really ingrained in their identity. So I think... Very much so. I think having things outside of basketball is important, having yeah. some purpose, playing a role in other parts of the um, organisation or in sport is key being able to get a, get away um and then yeah knowing what's important to you and making sure that you control the controllables i think mm -hmm. that's a really key thing is that there's so many elements happening in a training week you need to be able to say well i need to come prepared and i need to just put it all on the floor on this day and if it doesn't come together well i can go back and do it again the next day so yeah. i think i think coachability um your ability to prioritize is really key um and yeah, like I said, having something outside, outside. of the sport, yeah, I think it's <clears throat> no. incredibly important. Yeah, I think that's huge as well because there's so many times you see athletes as well. I know I've battled with it myself. It's yep. just kind of like something that isn't going right for you on the basketball court. It's the be all end all. Mm. And then especially then I guess when working with athletes who have been injured and then they're suddenly taken away from the sport, it's kind of yep. like, okay, who am I? What am I doing? Yeah. Type of deal. So you, you feel like you lose yourself. So absolutely. Really and I think, I, think, I think we're fortunate now that these conversations happen. Yeah. Um, and athletes are comfortable being vulnerable and transparent and saying, hey, like, I just, I can't handle this situation. Or I felt, I feel like I was going to be a lot more ready than I am now. What can I do? Yeah. Now, Mick, is there anything that you believe makes you stand out as a successful coach? Whew, um, that's a good question. I guess, I guess I probably pride myself on the ability to build like good relationships. I think um, as cliche as that sounds, I think it's incredibly important that you work on the person before the athlete mm -hmm. um, and often I've, I've found that people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care i think that's incredibly yeah, important so I, in the first couple of weeks i just tried to not do too much just try and find the simple things that are going to help players feel more prepared and feel like the program around them is more professional because then they'll just start to um, take on those traits i think so yeah look um yeah, I mean, people skills are important as a coach. I think probably um, physical experience with different programming, like getting getting your hands dirty, trying lifts before you put them in the program, trying a whole week of the training program before you write the yeah, program. Yeah, interesting, yeah. Um, and, and taking feedback early from players. You know, I think you guys have earned the right to be able to say, hey, Mick, this is too much or it's not enough. And 
just really taking feedback on and allowing athletes to have some autonomy in the program. I think that's really, really important. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess the people skills, being flexible, and then just having some hands-on physical experience yeah. is probably what I pride myself on. No, for sure. I think that's really cool because so many times, especially basketball coaches, and I'll be careful what I say here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's so many times it's, it's, you know, it's do what I say and not do what I do. Does yeah, that make sense? It. I think yep. that's the right one. So yep. um, yeah, I think that's a really cool factor there because uh, to be able to truly experience what you're giving the athletes, I think as well as athletes, it makes you go, okay, like, he can do it. Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> maybe not as much, but yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's key. I think it's about um, players understanding each other's stories, you know, mm-hmm. and saying like, I know, you know, where you've been as an athlete, what you've been up to and what you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and then if, if you know what, you, if you know the journey people have been on, you can get a better idea of where you can take them next. Um, For sure. So I think being active, being involved, getting out there, doing it yourself um, is, is really important. If you try and just coach from the sideline or sit behind a computer as a high performance manager and just rely on the data, yeah. um, you might get amazing results early on, but then when you know there's turmoil or you're not winning games or someone gets injured, that's when relationships are critical, You know sure. when, when the heat's on. Yeah, yep. yeah. Now, we are introducing a new segment into Women With Drive, yep. which is we want to talk about wellness with my guests. So I thought, who better to talk to than <laughs> someone who's a huge part of athlete wellness here sure. at the Boomers. Now, um, I was hoping you could talk to me about the different aspects, or I know we had uh, you talked about your pillars as well yep. for an overall wellness of an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I guess we sort of work on four pillars being movement, mindset, nutrition, recovery. And then within those four pillars, We've got programs or systems that support that. Um, I, I guess uh, I'm really big on managing energy and understanding energy. I know it sounds a bit mystic, but um, <laughs> I think it's critically important that you know what gives you energy, what's an energy in activity and what's an energy out. Mm-hmm. You know, like for me, sitting here talking to you and, and being around people is a huge energy in for me. I just know that about myself. Yeah. Um, so if I want to energize, I need to be around people. I need to work in a team. So I think understanding where you get your energy from and what, what's really taxing, like an extrovert, for example, doing something really tedious and time consuming and paying attention to detail is energy out for that person. Yeah. So I think understanding how you manage that in a week, you know, what are the key things you need to do in basketball and outside of basketball to make sure that you're coming to practice ready to train, you're not showing up feeling fatigued yeah. and there's no monotony. So if it's visiting your mum and dad once a week or visiting your grandma twice a week or you know doing things outside the program like Kayla um, Tess they're really big fans of doing Pilates for example Mm -hmm. now I can look at that and think well that's extra training load or I can look at that and think well that's a real energy in for them they leave those sessions feeling great and ready for the next day then that's we're going to have to make that work yeah wholesome activities yeah absolutely (laughs) but I think it takes it takes athletes a few years to work out well that might be fun but then the next day I'm quite tired from that so that's an energy out thing for me yeah um so you know balancing where you put your time and energy right and I think that's a huge just going for you're saying now Mm. To me, I was thinking uh, that kind of factors in a little bit with mental health in Absolutely. athletes as well, which yeah. I think is huge. So, what, what which are, is super important to wellness. Yeah, totally. What, I mean, yeah. Do, you, do you know off the top of your head what are some of the things that you do to, whether it's away <laughs> from basketball or yeah. in basketball, what, what do you do during the week that sort of re- re- revitalizes you, that gives you that energy? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the biggest thing for me is, is I like to go, I don't like to necessarily walk to the Oval all the time, but um, I'll take my dog to the Oval and just like watching her run. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge thing for me. And then um, being with my sister, definitely a huge thing where I'm like, I, I leave feeling better. Like just going out to breakfast with my family, those kinds of things. Exactly. I mean, you've got, yeah. you've got those non-negotiables. Like I've, you know, I speak to you guys regularly about having rest and, you know, using things like mindfulness or sleep, like they're, you know, they're pillars. Yeah. And I guess sleep quality is a huge one. You know, we've spoken about the importance of sleeping in, you know, thinking about sleeping cycles, yeah. 90 minute cycles and all that sort of stuff that we work on. Um, that, that, that goes without saying. And I really think it's things like, yeah, like you said, getting to the park, letting it, seeing your dogs run free. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> I know they're small little things, but they, they really do add up um, in a given week. And we probably, in the sports science world, we don't put enough um, emphasis, emphasis on those things but sure. I think they're incredibly important yeah, yeah no I think it's big time but just finally Mick just yep. about you what do you do for your wellness oh okay you got yeah. a bit of a skincare routine <laughs> we were talking about so uh, no not necessarily but I mean I think, <laughs> I think for me um, it's just about getting organized you know because I need to be in lots of places at, at the same time often with you know a number of different roles and a young family and 
So I think it's about um, being, for me, being quite careful with my time and where my energy goes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sleep's a priority. For me, I've worked out I don't need enormous amounts, but I need good quality rest. And I use the 90-minute cycle, so I sleep. <laughs> I don't stop every 90, but I think, okay, if I'm going to get four cycles of 90 minutes, that's six hours yeah. rather than landing right in the middle of one. Um, that's important for me. And um, what else do I do? I, I still actively train. For me, it's all about nighttime preparation so if i prepare my bags and my lunch and whatever i need my equipment my car's ready to go and absolutely i know what my morning routine looks yeah. like i sort of if i win the night i win the morning and i win the day that's yeah. a theme i have like if i just hit the sack not knowing what the morning looks like it's frantic my whole day feels the same absolutely. so for me that's um one of my strategies yeah. get organized the night before um yeah. thank you meg this has been absolutely awesome no, i know you a bit me. better too yeah, absolutely it's been a pleasure thanks for having me yeah right Okay, well, I will see you guys right after the break. Thanks for joining me tonight on another episode of Women Would Drive. I'll be back same time next week. Have a great night.